In this video, we're going to learn how to use include guards in C. Include guards are a technique that we can use to prevent a header file from being included twice when compiling our program, which can cause compiler errors when something in the header file is defined twice. Let's go over an example of this problem, sometimes called the double inclusion problem. Let's create a header file called student.h. So we'll make a new file and we'll save the file as student.h. Then we'll declare a struct for representing students. So we'll have typedef struct, and we'll say that students are going to have a name and an ID. So we'll have car name with length 100 to store a string of the student's name. And then we'll have int ID to store the student's ID. And we'll call this struct student. Then we'll save this file and create another header file. So we'll save this, make a new file, and we'll call this file course.h. Now in course.h, we're going to include the student header file. So we'll have include and student.h. Now in this file, we're also going to declare a struct, but this time it's going to be a struct that represents courses. Now courses are going to have students enrolled in them. So we include the student header so we can use the student struct. So here we'll have type def and then struct and we'll have student, students, 100. So our courses can have up to 100 students enrolled, and we'll have car name 100 to store the name of the course as a string. And we'll call this struct course. And we'll save this file. Now let's say that a programmer wants to create an application using these header files. What they might think is that if they want to work with a course and a student, they should include the course and student header files. So over here, they might include course.h with include course.h and student.h with include student.h. Because this is kind of a natural thing to do. If we're going to work with courses and students, it makes sense to include the course and student header files. The problem is that as our program is written, we're going to experience the double inclusion problem. So if we save the program and compile it, we're going to get an error. It says here, one error generated. And up here, it says error, type def redefinition with different types. And it says student.h included multiple times. And it even suggests a way to fix it too. So why is this problem happening? It's occurring because of what happens when we include a header file. So when we include a header file, we can kind of think of it as copying and pasting the text from that header file into the other file. So for example, with course.h here, when we include student.h, it's like this code gets copied and pasted right here. Then in d.c, when we include course.h and student.h, it's like these contents get copied and pasted here. And in the case of student.h, it's as if this gets copied and pasted here. Now the problem is we have two definitions of student. We have student defined here as part of the student.h file, and we have student defined here as part of the course.h file. That's why we're getting this error. Now to fix it, we can use what are called include guards. Include guards are going to make sure that a header file is only included once. Let's undo these changes here and then resave our file. Then we'll also undo the changes inside of course.h. So inside of course.h, we'll also undo this and save our file. Then we'll add an include guard. So at the top of the file, we're going to use the if not defined preprocessor directive. So here we'll have number sign if not defined and we'll have course underscore h. Then at the bottom of the file, we'll have number sign and if. So the way this directive works is that this code here is only going to be included if course underscore h is not defined, where course underscore h is what's called a preprocessor macro or a preprocessor constant. And what we can do is define course underscore h in this code here. So we could have here number sign define 
and then course underscore h. And we don't actually need to set it to anything. Now what's going to happen is that the first time the course.h header file is included somewhere, the course underscore h macro is not going to be defined. Because it's not defined, this code here is going to be included. Now in that process, course underscore h is going to be defined. That means in the future, if course.h is included again, now this code is not going to be included again. And that's because the if not defined directive is going to prevent that because course underscore h is now defined. We could do the same thing in student.h. So we'll save this. And then in student.h, we'll have number sign, if not defined, student underscore h. And we'll have number sign defined, student underscore h, and then end if down here. And this is going to have the same effect as in our course.h header file. So we'll save this. And then if we go back here where we include course.h and student.h, we now have include guards. In particular, the include guard inside the student.h file is going to prevent the contents of that file from being included twice. Because the student.h file is going to be included when course.h is included. At that point, the student underscore h macro is going to be defined. Then when we try to include student.h again here, that macro is going to exist. And because it does, the contents of the file are not going to be included again. We can save our program and test it out. So we'll save this and try to compile it again. And this time it works. We don't get any errors. And so the include guards are working now the only thing with include guards is this choice of the macro name is basically ours to decide. We followed a convention of naming the macro, the file name, and then underscore h. So we have student underscore h and course underscore h. Now if by chance somewhere else in our code a macro called course underscore h was defined, this could break. So we really need to be careful that the macro names we use are unique and only used for this purpose. Now there is another way of guarding include files. In C, there's a preprocessor directive called pragma. And the pragma directive allows us to give additional information to the compiler. Not all pragma directives are supported by all compilers, but a very widely supported pragma directive is the pragma once directive. It looks like this, pragma and then once. And we can get rid of this end if down here too. We'll do the same thing in student.h. So we'll save this. And then in student.h, we'll have pragma and then once. So pragma once is a widely supported directive. It's basically universal, even though it's not officially part of the C standard. And it's going to have the exact same effect as our include guards it's going to ensure the contents of these header files are included only once. So we can save our program and try to compile it and we don't get an error. And that's because using pragma once had the same effect as our include guards. Now the advantage to using pragma once is that we don't need to manage the names of macros. It's just simpler. And there's very little hit to portability because it's so widely supported. So this is how we can use include guards in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.